my clock shows 4.30, so I'm going to get the meeting started. I, as the chair, call this meeting to order, and as far as a roll call, we have three members present with the knowledge that one may be attending. We know that one won't be here in that uh, Mr. Shannon is in Ireland, and I'm not positive on the other two, so we don't have a quorum. That's probably the most important thing. But I do know the meeting has been duly noticed and available uh, by Amanda Keller, Deputy Clerk. With that being said, I'm going to go right to the agenda. Uh, the agenda shows seven items under discussion and action before I get started. Ladies, is there anything that you would like to have added or anything in the order of the presentations to be changed? No. That being said, number one is an update on Vernon Tom Thompson historical sign. First of all, I'm very excited. I would like to uh, make public notice to thank Bob Bellman for his efforts and uh, pursuit of getting this sign started and available. And I'm going to defer to Karen Tepley because, Karen, you've taken on the task of getting the paperwork filled out, which, again, likewise, I'm very appreciative of the, as a chair and would give you thanks for all your time and due diligence. Well, what would you like to share with us on the status of the sign right now? Um, well, thank you very much, and I am also excited to proceed with this project. Um, so on July 2nd, I received an email from um, the state of Wisconsin and just stated that he appreciated that, um, and they look forward, appreciate that they received the information. I sent the application as well as the application fee uh, to him. And he just said that he looks forward to reviewing the marker application and proposed text. So that's the last I heard. That was July 2nd. This is based on what happened from our April meeting. And with that being said, the minutes are posted on the city website. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to go back and check that information, they can check it there. A uh, short summation of what's being planned right now. Arrangements for a full state of Wisconsin historical marker. The plan is to have it located in or around Crosscup Park in the main area there and yet to be determined with a final location will be that sign. Uh, as well, the committee agreed and voted and approved four signs from the four main accesses to the city, that being on Highway 80 north and south and Highway 14 east and west, a noticeably smaller sign, but acknowledging home of former Governor Vernon Thompson, so that would be on one of the signs coming into the city. Uh, all that being said, the final plans are yet to be determined. Um, with the idea of four markers, uh, that, that isn't as much of an issue which couldn't be finalized at our November meeting, and I'm not jumping ahead, but our November meeting is on November 20th. That would be the third Wednesday. We had agreed to meet the third Wednesday quarterly throughout the year. And I'm, again, pleased that we're up and running and, again, active and thanking. Uh, I did receive from Ashley Oliphant a uh, transmission. You ladies should have at least a transmission sent to you as well. Of all the previous meeting minutes through the early 2000s, and Gretchen, if you didn't get that, I think that's a, a glitch, and so I'm going to make a notation to check on that. Yeah. Okay. Karen, and you did receive them, right? Well, they are all on the website. And they are also on the website so as well. They're okay. all, all the minutes from the most recent back to uh, 1987, October 30th, 1987. But I still want to get that determined on why you're not receiving those emails. Okay. And it could be just a character glitch, but whatever it is, it clearly didn't come. I sent, and it shows that it went through. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the city and what would be there. Um, and thank you for that, Karen. Um, ladies, do you have anything to add about the sign before I move on to item two, which is far more important, I think? 
Nothing further. Nothing further. Super. Number two on the agenda, a planning on mailing of the sign. Um, I've taken liberty already to make initial contacts to some people I think that would play a major role, um, starting first with Mayor Coppernall and just briefly discussed it with him, and he is all for it. But I also talked to former Senator Dale Schultz. Uh, he gave some names that I think are very appropriate, and if you don't mind, ladies, I'd like to run down that list of specifics. Brian Rood uh, worked with uh, then Governor Thompson, but for his time in Congress as well, because he did serve the U.S. Congress, Brian Rood would be a definite contact. Todd Albaugh, um, playing a role at the time and a part of what would be also an inquisitive look at uh, with WRCO and the available contacts there, as well as the Republican Observer, the Richland Observer, excuse me, getting that newsworthy and not to rule out the State Journal and, of course, area television state stations. Um, we had said somewhat kiddingly, and I don't mean to make light of it, um, we do have former governors in the area. Tommy Thompson would be the most obvious, and I think he would be very excited to come, and that would be not only from my discussion with Governor Schultz, or Governor Schultz, uh, State Senator Schultz, but also with others, because Elroy is his hometown, and he has that. But we also mentioned John Blaine and Boscobel, whether there's a relative there. And then uh, Jeremiah Rusk, being from Byroqua, and I mentioned those because they're in southwest Wisconsin. What I don't know, and I would be more than willing to investigate, is the family of Governor Thompson. Whether there are family members, obviously we would be looking at probably grandchildren. That would be, at least when I say immediate family, descendants from I don't know his background history there. Yeah, from the little bit I looked through the newspaper clippings and whatnot um, from the history room, um, I believe most of his family is in Virginia. Most in Virginia. That's what I found. That may, you may find different <laughs> the, no. the reading I did. Right, right, right. And with that being said, so that might be a little I'm hoping that, and I'm not being presumptuous at all, that we could have a plan drafted for the November meeting of uh, really three things. Uh, contact list is number one on mine, and that's why I mentioned that. Two, an agenda or a, an order of the program or whatever the ceremony might be um, as a part of it, and then obviously setting a date for it, which is right now unknown. Um, I'm guessing, and I would be looking towards the spring of 2025 to make it official. Is that too far-fetched to say that that would not be a possibility? The earlier you start planning, the better, I would assume. Okay. Do we want to create a separate committee? No worries. Do we want to set up a separate committee, an ad hoc committee for that, or do we want to create it as a committee of the whole when we meet next? So what time in the spring do you think? So if I were to use the calendar, so we would be meeting again in February, and I would like to be able to finalize it in February. If you're asking me for a date, I would propose probably giving it a month buffer, so that means that we'd be looking at something in April. Uh, that would be then a possibility for that. So then wouldn't it probably be better to have your ad hoc committee because they can meet beyond when we meet. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put it out there as far as an ad hoc as the chair, and with members not present, make it available to add to, which I think with an ad hoc it's very easy to do. But Karen, I'd like to turn to you first because you've played a major role. Would you like to be on that? Um, I would, and I think in, in some of the other committees, we call them work groups okay. so that you didn't have to go through um, all of the formalities. formalities of posting meetings, and if somebody can get together on Wednesday afternoon, it's like, okay, let's do it. Okay, and so the order of, we're going to call it a work group, work group. and we're 
going to refer to it as the Thompson sign. And of course, there's two parts to that. I plan on being on that as well and would be willing to set up a time. Gretchen, are you interested in being on that? Sure. Okay. While I have here as part of the audience, I'm simply asking ladies from the library, would you have an interest on someone from the library being on that committee? And I look at Crystal first because of the history room. In the work room. The, I, uh, <laughs> the work group, to be official, um, that we would have that. I will take uh, time and make the effort to reach out to each of the other members, simply talking about the work group and offering that opportunity. Karen? Yeah, this is just a, a suggestion to maybe also extend the invitation to Bob Bellman. I think that would be a good extension, and I will make that effort as well. And I think, um, well, in several conversations I had with Bob, um, he also brought up the um, possibility, and I think we've talked about it a little bit, of, um, of doing more of an informational, um, what did I call it last time, um, kind of a um, fundraising, um, but more for, more for getting information out there not necessarily for raising funds, but uh, so, you know, some things that come to mind are the, um, you know, when Pine Valley does the um, hunt for the coin or something mm -hmm. like that. If we had maybe, we found through the history uh, information, something that was, you know, specific uh, to Governor Thompson that could maybe be hidden with clues, something like that. And just for public awareness leading up to the unveiling of the sign. Is, a, is there a community group that you'd like to bring up, or would we wait till we get our work group together to maybe go from there? I, would say that. Um, I also feel it would be important both at the elementary because we teach Wisconsin history at the elementary level, oh. but also for the middle school, high school, to put together. A, I would refer to it more as a packet that could be in a press release. We would do that with the Observer and WRCO, but in this. I know they do, um, and I just heard her on the morning show um, this morning, Ms. Stoltz. Yeah. And so I'm going to reach out to her as well for that idea of using the community history as a part of the education within the school system. Good idea. Anything else, ladies, before I move on? Okay. Thank you, uh, Crystal. I'll put you on that contact list. How does that sound? Thank you. Now you got to read up on Thompson to see if you got your background history. <laughs> Item three on the list is the Brewer Library and History Room, and present Miss Pilla and Miss Foley. And I would thank you for coming. I appreciated the fact that you followed up with us, and that's why we have it now listed on the agenda. I'm going to bring up simply, we're looking into what our role could be with the library and where our structure goes. Item four is a discussion on the ordinances, uh, two of them brought up at least knowledge of, and the, they're lengthy, mm -hmm. very detailed, and I'd really rather not read through them, but simply reference them by title. Um, 1992 and 1995-20 were the ones that I was made aware of. That being said, um, some discussion really for the brewer and ladies, maybe if you have some comments to start with on space availability, that's probably the biggest thing, and then the direction with the uh, history room and what the resources are at the library. Ms. Pillow, could I turn it over to you for uh, some comments? Sure. Um, Crystal and I sp spoke um, after we had spoken previously yep. and um, came up with a few ideas that would seem to rise to the top in terms of what would be ideal or what could some goals be. Yep. Both are, um, are good and that's when we're brainstorming and going through ideas yes. that you're sharing. I, I'd like to start an itemized list, so go ahead, please. So the first one that Crystal had mentioned was um, 
help support with uh, cataloging donations. At times there get to be a lot of them and a bit of a backlog that takes some time to get through. Um, so that's always something where help would be a useful support. Um, at one point in time, there were actually two on staff in the history room. I'm aware of that. Um, and now we have one part-time and a volunteer. And I'm not sure how ours are volunteers with us per week. She's there about a half a day to a day a week. Um, and then the other half of that is that Crystal will be semi-retiring in a few months. Um, she'll be traveling November through April, so we will want to look at how we're going to keep the history room staffed during that time. The volunteer, I believe, will be staying with us one day a week, maybe two. Um, so we might be looking at shifting the amount of hours we're open during the winter, but that's another place where we could certainly, is there support from within this committee that might be willing to get us a hand in this room? So right now for the record, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's nine to four. And then part-time being uh, three days a week, but also the volunteer is part-time and roughly four hours a day. Well. She has committed to a day a week in the winter while I'm gone. A day a week in the winter, and I'm sure the library is looking at some options as well for filling that vacancy or that position. Well, we had some ideas, um, and we've been looking, but nothing as of yet has come to fruition, so we're still in that process. Is, is there a possibility, and I haven't uh, reached out or at least looked into, but either through Southwest Tech or through UW Platteville, which is the nearest institution, not to say that UW La Crosse or even Madison wouldn't have. Crystal and I both had reached out to UW Platteville, didn't get a reply, but we have not checked with Southwest Tech as of yet, so that's. I'll purposely, if I could, just briefly talk with you after the meeting because I have a contact at Southwest Tech. Okay. And why that might be an option, especially knowing the circumstances with the vacancy or being, uh, you know, a time period there. And I hope you enjoy that travel, by the way. Thank you. Number two on your list. Uh, storage space. Uh, this will be something that I think will be a forever kind of need with um, forever expansion, uh, things being added to the collection, but uh, we have limited space at the library that's already quite full. And so, um, there might be spaces with the campus or whatever the, the space might be uh, that would be of interest. That would be the first obvious. Mm -hmm. Could I also put for the record, Ms. Pella, that it's right now one room on the second floor and the majority of the area on the third floor, which is strictly storage. Does that sound correct? Yes. On the second floor, a third of that floor is secured space devoted to the history room. There's overflow into the middle third of I've the seen second floor. The display, yeah. Yes. And Very nice. a fully two thirds of the attic is storage. Two thirds. Mm -hmm. And that, that way we've got that for at least reference. Yes. Thank you. So in what where is the public allowed to go up there in the history room? Is it just you can't go into the storage area or just where you have the main displays. The third floor attic is not open to the public because there's only one exit up there. So just the second floor of the history room is okay. open to the public. And uh, from being up there, at least myself, it's full. I mean, it, there isn't really a lot of room on that third floor remaining that isn't either display or records with the newspapers being the uh, most obvious. Number three, you said, I hope you don't mind me going down the list, but I'm, uh -huh. reading, I'm reading the list. Uh, so this is um, something that comes to my mind as a library director is offering programs to the community that relate to our history room and Richland County history um, with only a part-time person on staff. It's not a luxury that we've had a lot of opportunity to dive into, but with additional support, is that something that could be in our future? 
You do have a Facebook page, and I've seen that. Is there anything else that's available on uh, electronic or uh, anything else? You, you know what I'm referring to is, uh, obviously we can go online, we can check things there. I have a web page. A web page, so there's Facebook and a web. Do I know the web? What is, what is the web page, Crystal? It's uh, all small letters, richlandhistory.org. I have not been there, so I'm going to go there after this, and thank you for that. And that is simply me not knowing, but maybe if I could uh, dovetail in a little bit, part of that is just making an awareness of these mm -hmm. resources to get it started with not just a program, but the Facebook page is pretty obvious, and people are on Facebook. I'm not. But with the web page, I would be very much interested in getting to that. Thank you. Anything else? Um, and my final point was just something that came in my early conversations with Karen. Um, you know, with with uh, our policy that's in place, making sure that that's a solid policy while Crystal's traveling or eventually. Um, moves on and has a predecessor or a replacement that her processes for the history room are consistent. Um, and the library board being the oversight, overseeing body of those policies, perhaps this committee could be of some consultation and, and weighing in on making sure those policies are sound. And is that policy on your web page? Is it available? We don't have to show it now, but again, I, I'm curious, so I'd like to. Uh, I usually invest. I, I don't think it's on our website, but we could bring copies with us. And my, my specific interest, and I think you already have figured me out, at least to this point, as soon as yep. The mission is, is on the website, Crystal says. Yeah. Uh, you said four things. Is there anything else before I put it to questions and comments? That's all I have at the moment. And Crystal, you're uh, fine with that, or is there anything to yes. add? First of all, ladies, thank you. I'm going to go to the uh, committee first. Questions, comments, uh, follow-up, ladies, before, because I, I have some things I'd like to do too, but I'd like to defer to you ladies first. Has there been any, um, has there been any discussion as to how much space you would really need if if you had unlimited funds, <laughs> what would you want? A wish um, list. A wish list, yes. Have you ever thought about that, or are you just busy doing the, the work that you got to do? Basically, yeah. Yeah, okay. You mean like square footage, or? Well, what would you want? Just unlimited more. funds. Just more. You want <laughs> more. <laughs> I know, I know there's been three discussions, and the first uh, you alluded to is the campus, obviously. There's, there's resources there, and that's through the county. I uh, know just in town, it was mentioned the former Farmers and Merchants Bank building yes. as one possibility. I know, and was it two years ago, there was some brainstorming about just what if we were to have a new library. There was no intent in building the library. I really felt it was more proactive in just getting a discussion to say, here's what we have for space, and also here's where we're looking at an aging building that we could get more. And I know there was two discussions of what if we actually had a separate history building, not just a history room. And I think that's part of it. Uh, you ladies, I'm sure, would agree with that as a wish list. I know. That would tie into mind. Did you have some thoughts, Gretchen? Well, you would probably have to have special rooms because some of those artifacts that you have might need special care. Is that correct? Well, just so it's heated and cooled. Right now, the attic space is not ventilated. Oh. It's not heated or cooled. Do you have any issues with critters of any kind? <laughs> well, previously there's been bats in the building, and we've had trouble with mice once in a while. Mm, okay. And you do what you can. Yeah. Yeah. So Karen, do you have some things that you wanted? I know you had brought up where the direction for the committee and where we could go, so I, I, I'd open that up to you as well. Sure. Um, well, just a couple of things. I, I did read through and highlight quite a bit on, um, you know, 
Conservation uh, Group, you know, our purpose, our intent. So this is where this conversation started with the artifacts in the history room and how the library history room and the library board kind of is that oversight at this point. And I was a little concerned in that that body was deciding for the city and not sure that that is where it should solely rest. Certainly, you work it every day, Crystal, or, you know, but, um, you know, ha having some input from the city side on that. So my only point in some of this um, is the ability to work within the current ordinance and not get too far outside of that, you know, uh, as far as helping um, with hourly and, and that type of thing. I don't know if that has to be, you know, uh, officially yeah. uh, put in this ordinance or updated or something. Um, if we touch on some of, um, you know, your your points that storage and programming and, and that type of thing. The only other thing I will bring up um, is I was also reading through our the city's um, comprehensive plan that we do every 10 years. And um, planning has is the committee that I don't know, you know, makes sure that this task list is at least looked at and and um, and worked at because we have heard through the years that these are done statutorily, they need to be done, but then they sit in the library back there on a shelf. So in reading through this, I found, I don't know why they highlight this in blue, but <laughs> community resource strategy, um, steward and celebrate community history. And there are four or five points in here where, you know, create and promote a more prominent accessible history center to focus on all of the themes in an exciting way. So I think your programming idea or even, you know, have it displayed more um, in a museum-like setting and not all tucked away. Because I remember when we did our 50th anniversary, how you, um, Crystal, how you had it, um, that middle room in a display more and, and just had, you know, like the wedding dresses and that type of thing were a little bit more um, brought out front and center. Um, and there, there are four other, uh, engage the Historic Preservation Committee, our commission, and County Historical Society you utilize the architectural tours previously offered by the tourism, which you brought up um, mm -hmm. last week. So there are certainly things, you know, that have been brought up through documentation where we could assist, but I think we have to we have to kind of watch it and make sure either we update um, the ordinance to branch out into these other areas um, or maybe some of them can filter through through this document but we have to make sure that we have documentation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I really want to do three things and I would piggyback with what you had as your four listed items. Four, I'm not a, number four, I'm not much aware of the policy, but all three that you brought up other than that, you've got to understand both from my role as uh, president of the Historical Society, and it's been a pleasure working with Crystal on the board and through the history room, that you've got my commitment to try to help. That's my first comment. I, I sincerely want to thank you. Um, I would start with Gretchen's comment because I think as a committee, we can play a role in fostering mm -hmm. either more space or another space, if I could use that terminology. And I think all three of us have at one time mentioned Jeepers. We've got vacant buildings and we've got area available. The biggest concern is having someone to staff it. And then how do you open it up and how do you make it available? And I think those are the, the catch 22s right now, but I'm not ruling that out because right now we're trying to find some ideas. And, and brainstorming. Brainstorming. And so, like you had said, what if you had an unlimited budget? I uh, specifically want to enforce uh, that I personally 
want to see more programs. And I, I went through uh, contacts with both um, the warehouse board and what they do there, and as well with the uh, auditorium, the RCPAC. And I can honestly say I haven't scratched the surface there in making that contact, but I'm genuinely interested in getting more cultural things. And if I could only mention, we haven't. This dates back to the women's clubs in the latter 1800s, and it was really the women's clubs that got the first history room, and it was over at the county, and they had it downstairs in one of the basements. They were given two rooms just to put displays up, and so that was the start of it. So I think that mention of the county connection, mm -hmm. the city ordinance as it is, I, I guess I'd like to even um, make it more aware because, like you said, it got put on a shelf and we really haven't done anything about it. And uh, that I think we need to. <clears throat> Agree. My last comment, and I really want to thank you ladies, but I would like to keep it on the agenda items both in November and again in February so you ladies are aware more for investigation, discussion, and follow-up that we could provide. And what I would do is then follow up with you ladies. I want to thank you for being here tonight, but feel free to come back if you'd like at either of those, but know that I plan on reaching out to you from the Richland Center Historic Preservation Committee as uh, my role as chair there. Is there a way that we could put them on your list so that they receive all the minutes and the information that we receive. Would you look at, gals feel comfortable with that? Yes. And then, of course, the minutes are available, but we would keep you on as a CC. Is it a CC for that? Uh, however they do it. Yes. So as a CC, with the privilege of, uh, if you want to, you can, but don't feel that you're committed to it anyway. How would that sound? Sounds great. Thank you. Is there anything else from you gals before we move on to the next item? Because, again, I want to thank you. Okay. Know that at least you'll be seeing more of me. How does that sound? I hope that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Item five on the uh, excuse me. Item four on the list is the two ordinances. Both were sent by electronic transmission. I know, ladies, as you're here, you are aware of both. Am I right in mm -hmm. saying that? Um, I see, Karen, you've taken time to highlight. Could you make a comment on that, or do you feel comfortable making a comment? Because you've done more than I did. I read through it. I reread it this morning as I was getting ready for the meeting here. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, my highlighting, however, is in the 1995 version, um, and I just printed out the 1998. So I'm going to surmise that the 1998 is more current, and this is the one that we should, um, you know, be our noses in more, more so than the other one. But basically, um, you know, the ordinance just covers. Our purpose and intent, some definitions, um, how the commission could, uh, if available, could be created with a historian, an architect, a real estate broker, all the person, citizens, and then um, you know really what the, the powers of of the commission are, and once again just kind of breaks down um, and deals quite a bit with uh, the certificate of appropriateness. And I don't, I don't think I... What's that mean? What's that mean? That's what I said to her. I, th I think part of that has to do with when somebody goes through and does some work on their building. Okay. My, my understanding of the process is, is that we can't do it. We do the outside and that's it. And is something that the individual is going to do to the property, if they're on the list, is it appropriate to the original uh, original structure. So if it was built as a carriage house, it should look as a carriage house. We have a list, and it's from your list, Gretchen, of houses and buildings that are on that list, at least with exception to the most recent update. And I'd like to thank that individual for really getting the commission back going right. and, 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 and the committee more active. I had a question both at the last meeting and in a time of discussion last week, and Karen, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot for one request. Is there a way that you could investigate through the city what our actual annual budget is? And with that being said, 
That way you're not put um, apart from the city council, but in turn for your role here as a committee member, you'd be able to convey to us that you know that that's what we have as far as money as I see you're reaching for something. Yes, <clears throat> I just wanted to bring up, because I, I made mention of this in several conversations, um, I do have an uh, email um, from Ashley Oliphant, um, <clears throat> and it states that there, she did find documentation that there's $10,648 uh, allocated for historic preservation. Now, it's not like in a separate account, like the library board money funds go in, but it's certainly a line item. Um, what she has to investigate further is um, what was the purpose for that uh, dollar amount? Uh, was it earmarked for something? And she has to go back to, uh, what does she say, 2012 audits forward um, to find out and, and just double check and make sure. Um, so while she did not have an issue with, you know, um, funding the, the plaque for um, for Governor Thompson, because that could come from ARPA funds, but she, you know, so that is taken care of. But she just wants to double check and make sure where this funds came from, and if it's going to be going forward. Thank you for that number. And since you brought it up, can I mention this? And I will take the lead on this as the chair. You've taken the time to do what will go on the verbiage on the sign, which you shared with the committee, and thank you, and the state sign. What I'd like to investigate is the costing of and bring to this committee as a proposal for the November meeting, the shape, size of the sign. My purpose would be to the committee members getting the information out to you ahead of time so that if you get a look at it and you say, oh, we don't want that or that's not there. What I was envisioning, uh, and do you have something on that that you've done at this point, Karen? Well, what I was envisioning was a very simple 24 by 36 sign. I could see it attached because we have four signs, because I've taken time to look, that have two posts and it's basically directions in the city, um, you know, where to go for municipal things. To have that attached underneath it, but still highly visible, and very simply with the verbiage, home of, Former Governor Vernon Thompson. Okay. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, no, my apologies. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, so you're speaking of the uh, DOT regulated signs, right. the four that are going to come. I thought you were speaking of yep, the no. actual uh, historic right. plaque. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's two, two different things. Yeah, two different things. We're covering the cost of that through our budget monies, but I'm right. I'm, I'm going to go through the. I'm sure we got. Uh, I don't mean this in a derogatory sense, but there's hoops with the bill, the city. Mm -hmm. There'll be hoops to jump through with the state where we place mm -hmm. it. And I know there was knowledge of and even from a county perspective of that sign as well, because not infringing on, but I'd rather have it very acceptable to everyone as far as what we do. Right. So you're looking to put them in the city? Excellent question. Those signs are located within the city limits. All four of them that I'm referring mm -hmm. to are located within the city limits because I'm going by the sign that has the um, population. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the exact boundaries of, but they're, when I say well within, it's within a, you know, a tenth of a mile as you're entering the city still. Sure. Um, what I can tell you, just um, going through the process of the of the wayfinding signs that are just now going up around, um, their DOT does have some pretty pretty good uh, rules and regs. You know, like um, there can't be too many things on the sign because that's distracting to the driver. Um, so, and placement as they're coming into the city has to be, you know. A certain distance and a distance in between signs. Um, so I don't know if you can place them on a bigger sign like that on, um, on an existing sign. That's the term, existing sign is what I'm hoping for. I think it's going to have to be on its own just due to the size of it. Um, but that that's where some investigating. <laughs> right. And then I have one other question and maybe you can answer this from the city and any past knowledge, Gretchen, are we committed to any 
uh, signage through the city as a contract that, for example, uh, I know of three sign companies that we could contact. Is there any restrictions or? Yeah. Um, so for our finance policy, if it's over $3,000 total, which I don't hardly think it would be, then you do have to go out for bids. Otherwise, we like to see two to three quotes, um, just so that you're making right. a sign three, decision. 3,000, did you say? Yeah, 3,000. And then I would, you, I would use line, I'll have at least two, but possibly three bids of what it would cost. So is that if you put all the signs in one bid, that's okay? Yeah. So, so we're talking about the four signs that would all say the same thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. The, those four would be the proposal mm -hmm. for, the, for the project, right? Right. Now, right. I, I belong to a, a nonprofit, Crime Stoppers, and we had to put up a sign about three, four, five years ago. And at that time, it was about between four and five hundred dollars, but that was for a regular billboard. Okay. So that kind of gives you an idea. Do you remember how much the signs were that you, uh, that the city put up? Yeah. Um, no, well, no, because it was a, a package, and there were twenty-five of them, and uh, two different sizes, and all of that. So I'm not going to try and um, redo that. But um, but sure, the, I, the bids would. Yeah, I, and by the way, that would be the draft. It's not where we have a final and or, but I'd like to have something in front of us for that November meeting that gives us uh, a good start for that. The understanding that we would then maybe uh, prove it, uh, get it approved through the city council by that February time frame. Mm -hmm. And would it be nice if those signs could go up at the same time as we unveil the other sign? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you ladies? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does, does it take very long to get city approval? No. I mean, like I say, it just goes through through finance and through council. I think DOT will be our biggest tool. Yes, DOT mm -hmm. will, well, because you, they do want to see the um, project. Um, they don't necessarily have to give the approval, but they have their guidelines that you need to follow and um, you submit it. Um, we have a representative that handles our area. You submit it and they just, you know, do kind of a, in general, looks good or here's some ideas that, you know, you have to follow these or, and these are suggestions. That's typically what they do. Okay, now the sign that you, I'm assuming you're putting it in Crosscut Park, where the other sign is for like GTE. Well, that would, the, would any of that be a restriction from the state because you're so close to Highway 14 there? No, that's a, a good question, though. That was a question that was asked in the application that that type of approval was necessary. And it's interesting, just from personal knowledge, and Boaz has built the building for the museum right next to their park, but they had formerly had a sign there. And there is still one on Richard Brewer oh. in the village of Boaz. But they moved the Mastodon sign out and relocated it next to the one on the uh, electrical, and I, I say that because those are, there, there's, there, there, it isn't so rigid that you can't have two signs at the same location uh, of different topics. Yeah. And it kind of depends a little bit, um, kind of what you just said, like the location and how close it is to the, the actual highway, so that matters too. Oh. I'm going to go on to number four unless I, or five unless I hear objections. Five, six, and seven are on our agenda. I think we both addressed and I'd like to just simply draw them to the attention because of the meeting. Um, previous minutes are available on the website and I have not been able to get there but now I know that I can go there to get them and we had noted back to 1987. So 87 to record even to present and then follow up with this. Is there any comments before I go on to item six, ladies? No comment. In number six, it says updated properties, and with the list that I got from you, Ms. Jelenic, the only one that isn't on there, to my knowledge, is the most recent application that we approved to add to, to your list that's there and that's available. That's the Albert Strang House by Mr. Tober. 
right. And we've, uh, do you have the address on that right there? 255 also? South Sheldon Street. And I'm going to defer to you to say if you don't mind getting that uh, updated onto your list, I would. I have it already job. updated on my right. list. Lady, but you've, not done, a, you've done but good. Not, but not on the city's list. You've done good. And then, uh, and that's where we would take it, if you don't mind making sure of that. The only question I have is do we, it's kind of off topic, but do we have the information that he was going to put in the paper? And has that been done? I haven't seen it. I have not either. I'll, yeah, I was going to reach out to him. Um, he sent me a whole folder. So. He, did, he did. Well, very nice. Um, I'll reach out to him and just double check. He, when he turned in his um, his project, he had written a letter, and that was what he was just going to publish in the paper. Um, he was going to wait a little bit. There was a holiday. There was this and that. So, um, but he had the um, permission to go ahead and publish. So we just left it to him to do so, and the newspaper said they would do it. No charge. So that's, that's even better. Where, that's where it was kind of left. Number seven on the list is a review of publications of recent properties. I don't think that we need to do that at this time. It's on the list as a discussion item. Okay. And I guess my follow up after this meeting is over is I need to check out what's in the library here, being okay. a new member, and what's available. Is there anything, ladies, that you'd like to add to number seven? None. I would go to because the future agenda items, is there anything at this time that you'd like to see added for the November meeting that will be coming up? Um, I think I brought this up at the first meeting and the next meeting. Please. And I'll just bring it up again. Please do. So, um, uh, like I say, there are communities in uh, our area, uh, Reedsburg, most uh, the closest one. Right. And their um, Historic Preservation com uh, Commission um, does things over and above the, um, you know, adding uh, properties to the historic list, such as um, local art in public places, um, local video history, grants. Um, the like um, uh, RFP for a public mural, um, historic surveys. Um, so um, we do have, I also found, um, an ordinance or proposed ordinance um, for public art murals and the like um, from 2012. <laughs> and um, it just it just is kind of lingering out here. So I didn't, I didn't know if that's something this commission would be interested, um, as in some of this, some of this information in our um, historic preservation purpose and intent. Um, you know, it does mention aesthetic character of the city. I would like to see that added to the agenda then for November, and I would like to target maybe one item on that, if we could. How does that sound? Okay, that sounds great. And I'll, I'll, I'll check with you before I get the agenda okay. listed. I'm going to use simply, and you used Reedsburg by example only. Right. Is that fair enough? Yes. Um, let the record show that Ms. Hallett is now present and they had acknowledged she had a meeting. I did. We had it last week scheduled. Oh, okay. And it didn't get published. That's what happened. That's what happened. And so we're, so we're official, we're published. I went back and looked at the minutes and I'm like, we did have the minutes. Which your timing is perfect because, and thank you for your email, sure. that the next meeting is already set. The date is November 20th. It's the third Wednesday. We had agreed to quarterly. I mentioned yeah. that as we started with the fact. And so that being said, the next regular meeting of the RCHP is November 20th. I do know, and before you leave, I'll fill you in after I adjourn, okay. that we have a work group on planning for the unveiling of the site. Oh, 
okay. And if you'd like to be on that, you can. If you would not, that's fine. Just bring you up to speed. Okay, thank you. Ladies, is there anything that I haven't covered that I should before we adjourn? Because I do feel comfortable. I know there's a meeting following here shortly. And I gotta say, Mr. Perry, 45 minutes was close. Am I right in saying that? Very good. Hearing none, then I'm going to accept uh, the adjournment as of 20 after because that doesn't need the formality of a motion and a second in a committee meeting. Is that correct? Roberts, we're going to start. That's correct. We're going to adjourn at 20 after as per meeting again on November 20th. Folks, thank you. Thank you to the. Yes, 4 30 again. If that works for everybody. Yep. Super. Thank you much. Well, thank you.